Greetings. Yes, um, we have another submission with three questions from a brother. We're going to listen to his questions and address them for him. So the first question is... Peace and love, family. So my first question is, um, S.A. Beans, how are we supposed to pray and, I mean, by the method, and who would you pray to? Who do we pray to? Do we pray to our ancestors or our higher selves? All right, so that's the first question, as Sabians or Noapians, um, how should we pray? And do we pray to our ancestors or our higher selves? He wants to know what's the method of prayer. It's important when you say as Sabians that you've actually confirmed that you are a Sabian or a Noapian, and you do that by coming into the family because there are lots of things we practice as a family in our culture. Um, it's not about staying outside. However, when you deal with the subject of prayer, you first of all also have to understand what is prayer. Prayer is communication that you're having with someone in particular so that you will receive a response. Just like if you wanted to speak to your mom or your dad, you will pick up your telephone and you ring their number and it will connect you to that person and you speak to them. So when you're speaking, you're not just talking into the air or speaking to someone you don't know or a deity you don't know. So when you're inside as a Sabian, um, we always say work from the inside out and not from the outside in. However, the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, addressed prayer as in, there, there is prayer in the sense of you're communicating with somebody, but most people in religion, when they pray, what they call praying, is just asking and begging some deity that they don't know who they're calling on or what they're, you know, talking to, and they don't get a response. And with us, we deal with our ancestors as animists, we know that we come from nature and so we know that our parents are real and it's through genetics because we go back, you know, generations and generations. However, the system of prayer that the Muslims, the Jews and the Christians use comes from ancient Egypt. You can find these, you know, the positions that they use in Islam, for example, you can find them on the walls in Egypt. So the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, put out a, a prayer book called Taful, yeah, or um, Ashutat. So we had different books that addressed prayer in the sense of us giving reverence to our ancestors. So we recognize as animists that as nature beings, we came from the sun and that the sun is what sustains life on the planet. So we used to raise our hands up in reverence of the sun. And, you know, we knew that Without the sun, we wouldn't get any crops and harvest. So for us, when we're dealing with prayer, it's more of a ritual that we have where we communicate with our ancestors and we know their names. We know who they are. We have pictures of them. And it's the same when you say, is he your higher self? Your ancestors are linked to you. They're just in different realms. So your mum and dad, their mum and dad, their mum and dad, their mum and dad, etc. Going all the way back to the first being on the planet, which would have been a woman known as Sakhamtat, right? This is where the system of prayers and religion goes all the way back to ancient Egypt and beyond. And in Egypt, the being that they were given reverence to was Amun. Amun is a, you know, triad um, is a part of a triad of deities, you know, Atum and Atun and then Amun. This is why all the religious world's prayers end with Amen, which is a derivative of Amun or Amin in Islam or Omein in Judaism. So um, if you want to learn more about prayer, if you can get hold of the book um, Taful or Tafulat or Ashu, um, Ashutat, Ashutat, that's the system of prayer. But ultimately, we do have rituals and a way of setting up your altar and opening up, opening up that gateway to communicate with your ancestors. And from the inside, being a Sabian, if you truly are a Sabian, you will be given that information 
and those rituals and how to do it. All right, let's move on to the second question. My second question is, by the time the vortex opens up, when the Elohim come here again, are we supposed to be fully elevated at the time that our chakras are fully unlocked? And um, yeah, in order to be abducted at that time so we can be part of them and be groomed. Okay, so he's asking about the vortex opening and, and when the vortex opens, are we supposed to be fully activated in terms of the chakras and um, so that we can be with them and leave with them? Um, again, this is why we encourage people to come inside if you recognize yourself as being a Sabian because when you're using words like Elohim, when the Elohim come, we know that's religious doctrine, you know, from the Bible. Um, people use Anunnaki, they use many deities, but our ancestors are known as the Parnataru, yeah? We're not really dealing with the Elohim, even though when we were going through the schools of religion, we were taught about these beings because the Bible references Elohim. So you should be inside now and starting to put Wusa back to practice and activating your what you're calling your seats or the glands because this is what gives you your aura and how you vibrate and the way that you deal with your everyday life. So Wu Sabat teaches you through the scrolls that the master teacher upon the Bab Yanun has put, um, you know, put out, it will start to groom you. But ultimately, you need to be really touched by the master teacher and be in certain schools or certain orders where you will receive information. And some people that have you know, certain gifts, like the, the holes in the ears that is mentioned in the Man From Planet Risk book, these people will know where to go when the time comes because um, you're communicated to telepathically. So you really need to be on the inside so that you're groomed and you know what's happening and when it's happening and where to be and where not to be. Um, your third and final question is? And my final question is, when the balls of fire hit here on earth, is, it, is the process going to kill like everyone that's been ignorant? Okay, um, that's the end of the question. So the question is, when the balls of fire hit, again, um, we would have to know where you're getting that information about the balls of fire. Um, the master teacher, Partner Bab Yanun, actually put out a scroll called um, The Balls of Fire. I'm trying to remember the exact title. Um, but yeah, it, it explains about these balls that he's referring to, which were used in previous times when the meteorite hit the planet and when you know the dinosaurs were eliminated. And these great balls of fire, uh, as it's referred to, are in certain places like in South America, etc., where people have actually you know seen these balls. And the reason is that if it does get to that stage where the planet has to be destroyed as it once were. And when we say destroyed, it's not the entire planet. It's going to be in certain places. Um, this part called I Was There, which is here, goes into great detail about that question, yeah? Um, but really, the point right now is to know where to be on the planet so that you will be safe when certain catastrophes hit because right now you have hurricanes, tornadoes, um, you know, you have many things happening, wars, tsunamis that are taking place around the world as this new shift is taking place and some places are not safe to be. This is why we have a guide, we have somebody who knows how to tell us where to, to go. When it happened previously, this is where the book of Genesis picks up in terms of the recreation, what people think is the beginning of creation. Um, Barashith, which is the word for Genesis in the Hebrew, it talks about when the world, as you knew it at that time, was being destroyed. They tell you it was a flood, and people say the flood of Noah. So Noah was preparing, and he knew what to do because he was guided by these extraterrestrials or Elohims. And at that point, there were three main races that survived which would have been the Africans, known as the Pataites, right? Then you also had what people called the Hindus. They also survived. So you had the two tribes, the Pataites, the Watusi, and the Hindus. They were instructed to go into the caverns in the inner earth 
and go beneath the waterfalls. There's a video on YouTube by the master teacher partner Bab Yanun called the uh, Elohim. And there's another video called the New Covenant or the Covenant. Um, just Google them on YouTube and you will find them. And they explain this whole process. This is why it's important right now to know the information, to be amongst the community so that you will be guided or told when to go on, when it's safe and when it's not safe. You know, right now there are rumours of wars um, and, like I said, a lot of natural disasters that are taking place. Some are unnatural as well. So if you really want to be guided and be taught, you need to come inside the tabernacle of the Most High as is put in the scriptures. You can't be counted when you're on the outside and a lot of information is only going to be divulged to those who have elevated themselves to the point where they recognise how serious this is because, yes, we're going through changes. Some people will survive and others won't. Um, and those who don't is because they haven't actually prepared and the cycle may not be their cycle because we have many cycles, yeah? You have 24 to 24,000 cycles to prepare yourself so that you don't have to come back. And it all depends how, how serious things get on the planet. You know, because they may be, like we've already experienced, pandemics, you know, floods, um, tsunamis, wars, as we're hearing. And, you know, so you have to be able to be in a position where you're being informed and being guided by somebody who knows, who knows these things. And this is why Wusabat is here. So don't stay on the outside. And it's not just about reading scrolls. And sometimes people mix up the information and they think that they're going to be picked up by Nibiru as part of the Anunnaki, for example. And when you're being picked up by crafts, you have to know who is in charge of the crafts and where these crafts are going and where they're taking you because you could end up being food for the gods, for these extraterrestrials. So you need to know who they are, who you can trust, who you can't trust. And that's the best way um, I can help answer that question. Come inside, go to your nearest bookstore, join the community and wait for further instructions and information from Parnabab Yanun, who is that guide in this day and time that will be able to tell you where is safe and where is not safe. So thank you for those three questions. Remember, anyone listening, any viewers, if you would like your three questions answered, just do the same thing. Send us a video recording of your three questions and if you are outside the UK, we will answer them via video. If you are in the UK, you may have the opportunity to come and have your answers um, given to you on a one-to-one -one in the physical form. So yes, please send us your three questions. And finally, don't you know think your questions are silly or too complicated or too complex because some questions are questions that other people are waiting to hear or they may have the same question. So you're actually helping and reaching other people by way of your question and you don't know who you're reaching but with your question and they're like, wow, that's the same question I had. So yes, if you have three questions you would like to be answered, video yourself, you can just use your mobile phone, send them in to us, you can just upload them on um, WeTransfer um, the link is in, you know, in the comments and in the sections below. Um, it's osmvisionwetransfer.com. So, you know, that's how we will get your questions and then we'll respond to your question as soon as possible. Thank you.